in 2016, my father attempted suicide. And I'm sure you can imagine this is one of the hardest things that I have ever gone through. And it was. And by the grace of God, my dad lives to tell that tale. And he's learned so many lessons. And he's actually used this story to inspire other men. And we are grateful for every single day of life that we have with my dad now. But I'm sure you can imagine me being 16 years old, coming home from practice and hearing that my dad just tried to kill himself made me very, very aware and hyper aware really of the types of subtle behaviors, beliefs, patterns, and identities that lead a man down this negative spiral of his mental health. And so what I hope to do in this video is shed some light on some of the more subtle things that I picked up on after paying a lot of attention to the way that my dad operated. And I hope that if I can bring some awareness to this, then it can empower us to show up better for the men in our lives. And if you're a man who is actually experiencing maybe some of these behaviors, then it can bring some awareness to you um, and you can prevent yourself from going down a negative mental health spiral like I watched my dad go down. Now, the first thing that's really important to be aware of is that men have this unique ability to hide things. We have this unique ability to deny when we're struggling to ourselves and to others. We're really, really good at pushing everything down into the deep, dark parts of our soul. And we're really, really good at seeming okay. But if you can pick up on some of these things, then you can show up and support a man um, who might not really be okay. So I hope to share some of these things with you. The first major behavior pattern that I noticed in my dad that I believe really led to this was that he put everyone before himself. Now, I know that this is going to sound slightly counterintuitive because the natural operating state for men is to be self-sacrificial for the good of others. And I do think that that is actually correct because we look at the biblical pattern for masculinity and Jesus sacrificed himself for the good of others. But what we forget is that Jesus would take time to take care of himself. He would go up on the mountainside alone and pray to God the Father. Right? And how often as men do we stop taking care of ourselves and we use taking care of the other people who we love as justification for that? Right? We think that I can't take care of myself because I have to take care of them. But we have to remember that we can't pour out from an empty cup. We can't give anyone anything we don't have. And if we don't take care of ourselves, if we don't prioritize ourselves, then we can't take care of others. We can't prioritize others. And that's exactly what happened with my dad. He'd be the first one to tell you that as soon as I was born, he stopped working out. And I understand why. I understand the logic behind, I need to spend more time with my kids. So I'm going to dedicate less time to myself. But I can tell you that as a son, I wasn't going to bed every single night counting the amount of seconds that my dad spent with me. But I was going throughout my life thinking about the impact that my dad had on me. And I would much rather have somebody who takes care of themselves who can actually impact me and love on me harder, who might be there for a little bit less total time than somebody who was suffering, who was there all the time, right? And I'd, I'd much rather um, show up as the father who, again, might take a little bit more time for myself, but might be able to impact my kids in a, in a better way than the father who took no time for myself, who was always there for my kids, but didn't really have an impact on them. So, pay attention to the men in your life. And if you're a man and you find yourself in this kind of cycle of self-sacrificing yourself all the time for others, then remember that one of the most selfless things that you can do as a man is to be more selfish, is to take care of yourself. Because the better you take care of yourself, the better you'll be able to take care of them. And be aware if any man kind of finds himself in this, in this mental cycle, if they stop spending time alone if they stop working out, if they stop doing things that make them feel better. Um, number two is that my dad had a lot of negative self-talk. Okay, so negative self-talk is when basically you pick up on somebody describing themselves as something bad, right? Like, oh, you know what? I'm the fat piece of shit. I'm just a fat dude. Like a fat guy like me or an old guy like me, right? Or someone like me couldn't do that. Or sometimes it comes across more subtly when they're using a lot of self-deprecating humor, right? Like self-deprecating humor is, is just a form of humor. It's funny, I get it. But when self-deprecating humor is overused, 
then a lot of times it's a reflection of what the person really thinks about themselves because the only thing that actually makes something funny is when there's a hint of truth to it, but it's almost like it shouldn't be said. Those are the funniest jokes, right? And so if somebody's using a lot of self-deprecating humor, it's because there's a hint of truth to it and it almost shouldn't be said. Um, but pay attention to the way that somebody talks about themselves. If they're constantly putting themselves down, if they're constantly degrading themselves, if they're constantly saying, I can't do that because I'm this type of person, then it's probably a good indicator that they have a negative self-perception, that they have that they have a negative self identity that they don't value themselves the way that they probably should and if somebody doesn't view themselves as valuable if somebody is constantly putting themselves down if somebody has a negative self-identity it's much more likely that they take actions of self-sabotage like overeating or again not taking care of themselves not prioritizing themselves right um so be very very aware if a man in your life has a lot of negative self-talk if they put themselves down if they overuse a lot of self-deprecating humor um, number three was that my dad didn't really have friends growing up. And I don't mean when he was a kid. I mean, when I was a kid, I never saw my dad hanging out with the guys. I never saw my dad inviting the guys over or going hunting or going fishing or having any real hobbies with other groups of men or working out with other groups of men. Um, and I, and I always thought this was kind of odd because my friends would talk about how their parents would have friends over, but my parents never have friends over. I think this is really, really frightening because as men, we need other men in our lives. The Bible tells us that iron sharpens iron, and I don't think it tells us that um, by accident. <laughs> um, I remember during an interview that I actually conducted with my dad at one of our Default Kings events, my dad said that he thinks if he had at least one or two friends that he can talk to in that year before he attempted suicide, that he doesn't think he would have done it. But he had no one to talk to. He had no one to go to. He had no one to lean on. He had no one that was there to remind him who he was and to remind him how much God loved him. And so it was easy for him to convince himself that the world would be a better place without him. Right. So be very, very wary if you see a man in your life who doesn't have any friends. Um, and uh, if you don't have any friends, then start to look for men who you can lean on. Start to look for men who you can share what you're going through with um, the fourth behavior that I picked up on that I didn't really think was a big deal when I was a kid but now looking back I see how big of a deal this was um, was that my dad stopped going to church um, as consistently as he was before he was still going to church kind of periodically but um, when I was a younger kid you know we were church every Sunday type of family my dad was in ministry my mom um, was a Sunday school teacher. It was a non-negotiable. Church on Sunday was the most important day of the week, right? That was the most important event of the week. But as we kind of got older, um, going to church started to become a little bit more infrequent. And my dad never stopped going to church. But you can see that prioritizing his spiritual life kind of started to be something that was, was deprioritized, really. And I know that our spiritual lives, as inherently, as, as, as men, as, as women too, we're all spiritual beings. We're spiritual beings living in physical bodies. And if we don't prioritize our spiritual health, we don't prioritize our connection to God, then we're not going to be in a good mental state whatsoever. So if you ever kind of pick up on a man who was once really, really devoted, but starts to seem less and less devoted, starts to display less devotion to his faith, then there is probably something going on. Um, I can't remember exactly who taught me this or if there's even a verse in the Bible that says this explicitly. But the, the this idea is that when we sin, we want to hide from God because we have shame, right? And, and this is the pattern that we find in Genesis with Adam and Eve where when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they became naked, right? And they tried to hide from God. And so when we sin, um, when we're turning away from God. we It's hard for us to want to confront him more because we know we're vulnerable. We're naked, right? And we know he's going to see our sin. And so when somebody is turning away from God, when somebody is not as devoted to their faith as they once were, it's likely that it's because there are some things that they're doing that they really need help with, right? So pay attention to behaviors like that. And the fifth really big thing that I noticed my dad um, kind of do that was pretty subtle but that indicated a lot of subconscious self-sabotage was that 
when we would talk about healthy eating and we were much younger, my dad kind of seemed to have like an understanding on how severe his health prognosis was, right? And he would try to make all these attempts at eating healthier. He would try different diets and none of them were really sustainable um, when I was younger. But um, it got to a point where my dad seemed like he kind of threw in the towel. And when we would talk to him about eating healthier, he would almost like explode at us and, and kind of say like, it's no big deal, right? Like, it doesn't matter if I eat this thing. And like, we can say on paper objectively that if my dad was already struggling with his health and continuing to eat unhealthy, obviously it mattered. Obviously we know what that could lead to. But in his mind, um, it seemed like no big deal. And when a self-destructive behavior starts to feel like no big deal to somebody, then it becomes much, much easier for them to continue it. And that again is an indicator that they don't value themselves, right? Like if I were to say that I, you know, got the flu or something like that, or like fell and scraped my knee or like broke my ankle and was like, ah, it's no big deal. That would probably concern you, right? And unhealthy eating isn't one of those things where the effects are immediately felt, right? It's not like you eat a Twinkie if you're overweight and you immediately die or immediately have a heart attack or something like that. The effects are much, much more delayed, but they're as severe as anything else. They literally end up cutting somebody's life short. And we all, again, understand that subconsciously as human beings, that's no mystery to us. But when somebody is saying that their unhealthy eating is no big deal or that we shouldn't worry about it, then it's a really powerful indicator that they are valuing themselves less. So those are five subtle habits that I picked up on um, that indicated my dad's negative mental health spiral. And these are things that I, I highly recommend looking out for. Again, if there is a man in your life who is displaying these or if you're the man yourself who is experiencing these. Um, be very, very wary of men who put everyone before themselves and don't take care of themselves. Be very, very wary of men who use a lot of negative self-talk. Be very, very wary of men who have no friends. Be very, very wary of men who were once really devoted to their faith but started to skip church and are less devoted to their faith. And be very wary of men who start to treat unhealthy behaviors like unhealthy eating as no big deal. And if you're watching this and you can kind of relate to some of these behaviors, then please discuss it below in the comments. And if you feel like I missed anything that you've picked up on, um, either in your own life or in the lives of men uh, who are who you love, who you've seen experience these negative downward mental spirals, then uh, then please add them to the comments below just so we can increase the awareness of, of these types of behaviors and we can show up better for the men in our lives. That's it. Love y'all.